Audio Jungle. Good evening everyone, this is Kate Vergara from CBC News. There are many reasons why planes crash, such as mechanical difficulties, weather conditions, and structural failures. According to the authorities, the incident in Los Angeles International Airport is caused by a plane human error. November 2, Monday, 9 p.m. local time. The SkyWest twin engine turboprop flight number 369 was told to hold its position for takeoff, while the UN0737 flight number 0246 was landing on the same runway. Because of the incident, the SkyWest burst into flames, and the US Air skids at the speed of 70 meters per hour, and finally crashes into an abandoned firehouse. Twelve people aboard the smaller plane were killed as well as an eventual total of 23 out of 89 passengers of the 737 were killed, together with the two passengers who initially survived the crash, but died from burn injuries. The evidence of the incident lies strewn among the ground of Los Angeles International Airport. Tonight, we have an exclusive at the conference, where they explain the cause of this crash brings us more. Good evening, everyone. I'm the head of commissioner for U.S. Airways. I'd like to thank all of you for being here tonight for hearing our press conference regarding the 737 U.S. Airways flight number 0246. Tonight, our CEO, followed by our lead investigator from Los Angeles National Transportation Safety Investigator, are here to talk about the incident. Good evening, everyone. My name is Richard Rivera, and I am the CEO of U.S. Airways. I am here tonight to brief you about what really happened between the flight 737, US Airways flight number 0246, and SkyWest. So at 6.04 p.m., an air traffic controller clears SkyWest into the runway by the advice of the captain to hold its position. She didn't immediately clear them for takeoff, so the SkyWest had to stay into the ground longer, and it caused us so much delays. Minutes earlier, the 737 U.S. Airways flight number 0246 had been cleared to land at the same runway. As the 737 U.S. Airways landing gear touched down, and as the nose lowered, the landing lights revealed the turboprop. Unfortunately, the captain of the U.S. Airways did not see the SkyWest into the runway, and the U.S. Airways started to hit the wing of the SkyWest, and it started to flame, an explosion happened. But the 737 U.S. Airways can't stop and it was still running at a speed of 7 meters per hour and finally crashes into an abandoned firehouse. There were 35 people killed, 12 from SkyWest and 23 from U.S. Airways. And there were also two initial passengers who survived the crash but, but died due to the burning injuries. As a CEO, I would like to make an apology for the families of the people who were killed during that incident. From the bottom of our heart, we are deeply sorry. To prevent this, to prevent this incident from happening again, we are to, we are going to prioritize the use of the outward runways for landings and the inward runways for takeoffs. Additionally, a new controller tower was built in a more certain location, significantly taller, and with a better vantage point, allowing visibility of all runways and critical taxiways at the airport. I will be following up to make sure all of the safety measurements are in place so, in so incidents like this will never happen again because your safety is our main concern. The SkyWest was cleared by the air traffic control to position and the hold for takeoff at the runway. The air control forgot about the aircraft's position and cleared a 737 for landing on the same runway that caused a collision between these two aircrafts, resulting in the loss of both aircraft and several fatalities. The probable cause of the incident was the procedures in use at the Los Angeles Control Tower, which provided inadequate redundancy, leading to a loss of situational awareness by the local controller, and inadequate oversight of the Federal Aviation Administration, or the FAA, for failing to supervise the control tower managers. The ground system was not functioning at the time of the incident, so the control tower was out of vision to the spot where the SkyWest flight number 369 was hold. 
Because of the air traffic control's um, confusion, they positioned a SkyWest commuter plane on the runway, whereas they had just cleared a U.S. air to land. This is a very preventable accident. Hence, we recommend using different runways for takeoffs and landings at Los Angeles International Airport. The rescue were on the scene of the crash within minutes and began bringing out people from the plane. Because of the intense fire, three of the 7376 exits could not be used. Neither of the front exit was usable. I tried several times to get myself out, but I wasn't able to. At that point, I thought I was going to die, like really. Then, like a miracle, I had a vision of my wife and kids. It was like I had some inner strength that I couldn't really tell. I knew I had to get out of there. I made one effort and my shoe came off and my leg came free. And there, I saw someone reaching out to me. I heard two girls from the captain. I could not see him clearly because of smoke that filled the cockpit. I heard two groans. I've never been around a person dying, but I'm positive that what I heard was his death at the moment. As far as we could tell, there was nothing down the runway. Like, anyway, there was nothing. We touched down right where I had the thought we would, about 1,200 feet down the runway. As I lowered the nose, that's when I saw on the windscreen the small aircraft quickly, rapidly filling the windscreen. That plane all of a sudden showed out of nowhere. There was crunching metal, there was an explosion. I could see the captain's hand at attempting to shut down the engines. And I'm doing everything I could to get the plane stopped, but it's just one stop. I could see flames on the right side. I could feel the heat on the soles of my heart. I unbuckled myself and tried to lift myself out, but my leg was stuck. Without a doubt, Captain Mark was one of the most professional pilots I've ever flown with. So I salute him and I have a big respect to him. The floor was filled with smoke and fire right in front of my jump seat, as if we were in the middle of a big fireball. As we did our commands to evacuate because of the raging fire, I could see and hear every passenger crying for help, and some of them were like staring at me looking for an answer. I remember feeling a lot of sorrow towards my colleagues as well as the passengers who died in the incident. Everyone seated in row 6 or forward was either killed or sustained major injuries while everyone sitting at the back row were able to escape with some minor injuries. The majority of the survivors used the right overwing exit to evacuate. Multiple issues slowed down the evacuation from the right overwing exit door, including a passenger seated in the exit who couldn't open the door, a brief scuffle between two men, and the partial barriers in the exit. From the location of the bodies, only two victims on 737 were found in their seats. While we believe that 17 passengers had unbuckled their seatbelts, and died from smoke inhalation while making their way out. As a consequence of the incident, intersection departures at night are no longer permitted and while on the runway, pilots are encouraged but not required to remind air traffic control that they are waiting for the instructions. Again, this is Kate Vergara from CBC News. Audio Jungle Thank you.